of education to children, and, and uh, certainly the service that I, I know that you take seriously on the performance. So let's talk a little bit. Okay, so we go there. So just to for tonight's discussion, <clears throat> we often talk about our colleagues in Region 21. Um, there is not a Region 21 in many regions. But in Region 21 is where all the bad behavior happens, and all the negative things happen. Um, and you ought to be in the most high, you've got 100 percent so far, you've got all the things around governance. So we're going to ask the question, what isn't good governance? Are there some examples from Region 21 that you may think of that say, oh Lord, thank God, because as Roland said, you all have, you have a great reputation. This is a great school district. There's Lord, good folks. And of course, only the good folks live in Region 20, but in Region 21, not so good. So what behaviors might they be engaged in that you go, oh, Lord, say this? Micromanage. Now, what does that mean? <laughs> yeah, well, thank you. That's exactly what Webster says. In English and in Spanish. It says it both. But, uh, stick your knee to where it does not that. Our slides. It's a new slide. What else? Telling the truth is that we do not. Yeah. I can't believe it. Telling the teachers how to teach. Telling the teachers how to teach. Telling the superintendent. Yeah. What else? Be dishonest about how we're spending our money. Yeah. Forgetting their boundaries. I'm sorry. Forgetting their boundaries. Forgetting their boundaries. So again, remember, we're talking about our colleagues in Region 21. Okay. No, we're just here. Before we went to Region 20. Okay. 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 I got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. So, you know, I'll let me. About that, you know, the truth of the matter is, people are doing their well intention, and so they go down that road, and they read about it. Um, so again, because you are on the path, continue the path of those things. Don't forget that there are those who do struggle with that as well. So we're going to ask you to share at the affairs person next to you, and then we're going to ask the board members to share out number of years on the board, what you'd like your legacy to be, and what would graduates from East Central say was the greatest gift that your district gave to them. So just turn, pair up, and uh, I think we've got a board member and a staff member, and so just turn and share that real quickly. We're going to give you about a minute and a half. This happened this happened so yes, you're gonna have to yeah, slide up. <laughs> it, it was a nice pairing. We didn't even talk about it. It's magic. We didn't talk about it. So we shared. Remember, it's an education. So that's right. Because you're sharing a nice day. So we're going to have to make a
out a number of years on the board. Uh, and seven years on the board. Awesome. Thank you for your service. And then tell us what you'd like the legacy to be. Um, you wrote me so. <laughs> Students is 
for being perfect, honest to me, I had no knowledge of anything beyond the books. No counselor talking to me about after school. No chance to do anything. I just stumbled my way through to whatever I had reached. And, and I think it's very refreshing to see all the opportunities that these kids are given. And if, if I was a part of that, what they say about me? I don't think they'll say anything about me, but they'll say, you know what, that fellow said up there, he was on Santa Claus to Christmas, and I said, I'll do it. I said, you know, that fellow that used to sit up there, he actually gave us a chance to choose where we want to go. Did they say that? I did do it. What do you think students say to the greatest gift you said that they have to make? That we gave them all kinds of possible things to check. Well, I want to go this way, go that way. Not everybody's in my college or anything. There are not new college that are doing it. And some of us, it gets to the point where we can't do it. I'm a tinker, I do stuff. But the body's saying, your mind says yes, but the body's saying no. So we need that new power of the to come and do us that we do And if we provide that opportunity for these, these kids and they know that they can go in that direction because they've been open to it, then, then they say, you know, he was part of that. So opportunity, life beyond his central um, family, that family values, I heard you say all of those things. So thank you all for sharing. Uh, staff, thank you for, for being here. I'm going to just ask you guys to show, tell us how many years you've been in this so far. How many years Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
that if you're not a North Asian, you're not a North side, you're too afraid to continue to see this all along. And so I think in terms of you turn that around, I do think that uh, and how that will uh, impact your schools, how it's impacting your community. I don't think it's good at this point. Ah, I mean, that's the thing you're that you're probably you're right on that. Yeah, it sounds like it sounds like you're growing your own, and that's exactly what we know we have to do. So looking at this little schematic here, um, think about what is governance? What's the role of the school board? Um, look at this and tell me what's true about this. What isn't true? Is this governance? Is this right? Wrong? Does not look right to you. Okay. What what's off on it? Upside down. Parents and community meal tops were the bottom of the my way I would think that um, as far as teachers, that um, you know, I mean, I'm sure they feel the need to go straight to um, their principal, but they could certainly use the assistant principal and. Um, I mean, I learned that, um, you know, we always to suggest that um, people follow the change of man. So, so I, I get approached as a board member, and all I can say is that you would just check with your direct, direct person, or whether it's a community member or a staff, I'm just saying, I, I believe that you should probably check with your person in charge of changing the okay. What else do you observe about this? Is this governance? Is this not? Is this lacking or something? I'm not sure what it's supposed to represent. Is this supposed to be parents report to teachers, teachers report to principals? Is this a chain of command? Is this is this what chain of command looks like in this I don't I don't think so. I think the, the parents and the community are in the right place here. Okay. I mean certainly when you start talking about starting to talk about how the environment works okay. then deal with teachers and principals and superintendents of school board, then yes, absolutely, but I, I don't think the parents in the community belong in that block where they report to the teacher. Okay. Right. So, yeah, that, that, that doesn't work. Would that be where they needed to start if there were a problem? Well, it depends on what the problem is. Okay. Okay. If the problem is student-related, then yes, we would prefer for them to start I'm going to say the lowest level, but that's not really We don't true. think it, yes. Where the yes, problem yes. starts, then right. yes, we want them to, to start there. But, uh, but no, I, I don't think that's, I don't think that's the goal. You know, particularly with our community. Our community, if you don't have any students in the district, you don't have a teacher to you report to. Okay. Uh, you know, if, if your problem is with the, uh, with, with the police department, Certainly, you don't have a teacher to go to. There's a place to do that. Uh, but I don't really think that that's a hard set of goals. So that wouldn't be the way you direct a parent if they didn't have a child in school. Makes sense. Right. Mr. Martin, did you have? A, I, I thought you raised your So I, 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 I don't see any kind of way that's covered because if that's a problem with the community or the parent. I would love to go to that chain of command and run straight to the school board and think of me to correct something that no one else is aware of when you took the problem with them. Maybe it could have been clear before we got to the school board. Maybe we should, you know, not, I think it should have some type of chain of command. How about a couple of instances where I'm called on an issue and I would listen to you.
possibly, but in appropriate time intervals where we can't, where, where I know we're doing the right things and we have the right information to make the decisions. So, okay. so when you did the profile graduate, what year was? Uh, that was about four years ago. Three or four years ago, CBAS has been working on the last two years. Just rounded it out in the it's, it's, it's operationalizing that too. Okay. So, while we're speaking in 2015, when you did the profile graduate, how many do you remember for us? Uh, 30, 30 ish. Okay. And then in the second one? About the same. Okay. And uh, CBAS really went for about three days. Two and a half days, we had an consultant come in. Okay, so we had two different rounds of that, and two other rounds of that. The first group that did three corners. Well, we're we'll talking about the profile. Oh, sorry. The profile. Oh, yeah. So two and a half days together. Okay. Yeah. Okay. The other yeah. community based accountability yeah. work was over the course of two years. Okay. So, my question to board members um, think about the last week. Okay. So, think about your last week. Roughly, how many community members did you? interact with church, grocery store, coffee, I mean just just a rough number. Don't worry, it doesn't have to be, you know, 27.56. I mean just 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 a guesstimate. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, Thirty or so. Okay. So 16, 17. I'll be out of time. Okay. Probably 30. 30. Okay, so we're roughly about 75 people. Okay. When you say interactive, you mean going to um, events or just being contacted? Or having it to the store? Any kind of conversation? It's been a lot. 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 So our friends, our friends in Region 21 have these experiences. So let's see if we have these. Okay. As soon as they got on the board, they had a whole set of new friends okay, that knew they were on the board. And sometimes they'd be in the grocery store, or they'd be, you know, in the community, or you know, somebody would bump into, oh, you're on the board, okay. And sometimes they'd be in church, okay. And somebody would come next to Linda and say, Oh Lord, I know that Linda's gotten on the board. I know that she needs the wisdom to see some important decisions that need to be made about for my child. And I hope that you will give her the grace to see that the right decision is the Lord. And it's like, oh, I'm not there. Okay. <laughs> so, you know, that may or may not be true, but the truth of the matter is you interact with people every single day. So the question I hear embedded in is there are formal opportunities to interact with. You may have very formal questions about, okay, so we're talking about a strategic plan, we're talking about a profile graduate. But it's interesting, those interactions, you begin to pick up patterns and ideas that is there a mechanism to bring that back. If it's a concern, there's a mechanism for that. But what if it's bad? What it's just, oh, I wish our kids could have blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And you go, okay, no, well, we all wish that. Okay. But you may hear it once, you may hear it three times, you may hear it none, you may hear it five times. But when you start putting the aggregate, you have 27 times we've heard it in the last couple. Maybe there's something we should look into. I think that's what I'm hearing in terms of. What's the reason to bring that? It doesn't have a form. We don't need to have a procedure. We don't need to have a form. It's just about how do we bring that back? How do we collect that information? Uh, because that informs. I mean, it does. I'm just guessing, like Region 21, that if there's an issue, people are on your door. Okay? We don't often hear about things that go really well or just dreams and aspirations. Is that fair? Does that make sense? Is that last question? When was the last time you uh, had a student course? 
and we were there was a student panel that was like maybe a panel of former graduates or something we heard because I mean really they're the most recent consumer and you know kids say the darkest things. That's back to what Gil said and I never talked to a graduate. Talked to a graduate. When was the last time there was student voice in front of this group? So in other words, you heard from kids to rest. Okay.
and uh, coaching catching. He goes like that. He missed it and kept on going. Yeah, yeah, okay, so then you know, and it's kind of like, so I'm sorry, I think we just said something. So we'll come up with that. I mean, there's such truisms that come from, from that. So a couple of thoughts from the page you said. One is uh, that do all trustees have very informal interactions with their constituents similar to what's in the operating procedures for complaints. I regularly have interactions with all of them. They'll shoot me text today, got a call today, curious about, comes to me and I absolutely look right into it, find some information, give them some feedback, um, and, those are, and say thank you so much for letting me know because they're also very important, especially if it's a pattern. Uh, you know, sometimes you get an anecdotal interaction and they can be emotional and all that, but it's a one-off. You know, we don't make big consistent changes for one-off. But it's important that we know because there's always opportunities in there. Um, the other thing is with the student voice, <clears throat> we did learn uh, how important student voice was in the profile of the learner work. We had students involved in that work. We basically had students involved in the We did the athletic program with the other killers. Uh, essentially what our program is all about. And those pillars came from interactions where the first of them, the first interaction was adults, coaches, us in the room, and current students and former students and raw athletes here talking to these all of us about their experiences and what they like and what they wish to be done more of. And they responded to some prompts and it was very, very exciting really strongly is reflected in those pillars that every coach runs through that runs their program. Uh, every new hire has to say, okay, it's going to sign up for it. This is what we're about, okay. Um, and it's very specific. It's the industry of those who like me. So of course they have to be parsing. What do you expect? It's the case. So anyway, yeah, good point. Really noted. Definitely need to make sure student voice is represented when we make the decisions. And this isn't saying this graphic's right or wrong. This is just to kind of open it up and, and have a notion around, uh, you know, how do you handle complaints? Uh, where do you direct people? And in that bank, I have this little quick assessment. And I did not make copies for you uh, staff members, and I apologize for you did all around scenarios related to board behavior. But you can cheat and lean over and look on the board members. This is just going to check you. It's a check-in to see what would you do. It's not a Basically, it's what a it's friend. asking you. What no, would you do? Call a friend. Call a friend. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, these are questions around scenarios and some true and false on the back. What would you do? Jones, Jones what would I go to the grocery store? What are you going to do? So.
several pages of population here. That's absolutely it's a good choice. Um, Let me ask you a question. Yes, sir. And how would you know the superintendent know that uh, the teacher was uh, being truer or uh, absent? I don't think he keeps up with how many what the teachers are absent or not. So why would you take that to the superintendent? Well, if the teacher is always absent, then that's yeah. certainly something that, that one would want to know and you want to check that so in HR. In HR. Yeah. I have to deal with the PTA deal and somebody come up to me and say somebody like a teacher, you know, I sound kind of crazy, but just so you know, if you might want to look into it, we'll have that kind of deal. And it might not be a, it might be a frequent flyer that always complains, it might be a one off that is growing Yes, sir. And sir, here's another consideration. Okay. Sometimes you will bring something that it turns out to be something totally different. It leads to something else. Because as, as he or his other sitting that see looks at stuff, it's like, oh no, not very young. Yeah, I see the other. Uh, like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. All so, right, you yeah. say Yes. Yeah. Any other thoughts or questions? What about number two? Was there a lie into there? Or? We've been approached by parents about congestion. Y'all would never have that at the drop off and pick up area. There's never complaints about hey, congestion. Hey, yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I say, How do you handle that? You've got to go investigate it on your own. You've got to go get your binoculars and sit out and watch. Now that's true. I've had someone tell me that what the workers did and said, well, what's the best approach here? I think just call. Not directly to you. Oh, that's what was wrong with B. Yeah, direct him to take care of him. I will really usually say, I'm on So actually, what I put is the best. And I call Steve. As a former superintendent, I wanted to know, but yeah, the direct them is, yeah. I put none of the above. Who's the best choice? What about number three? On, uh, you sit on the facilities committee, you've got cousins. Uh -oh, what's wrong, Ed? Yeah, no, 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 so sorry. Okay. Just going to slow burn. <laughs> slow burn. Okay, so what's the problem with C as an answer? Oh, yeah, let's talk about that. What would be wrong with emailing all the board members? Yeah. So, so that's that is your violation of the Open Meetings Act, and you have just now decided you look good in orange with numbers on your back. Right? And so. you left your superintendent totally out, so he, he might not know anything about that. I mean, he probably does, but yeah. So thank you. What about on number three? Got this cousin. Cousin Gino's got the security company down here. What do you think about that? Um, even though he's my third cousin? <laughs> so what would you do there? None of the above. Okay. Drop that taco and walk away, right? <laughs> Facebook account 
and say,
And if they think you got more power than you have, and that you can make those kind of uh, decisions. And, and that's why they, they want to jump over everybody and come straight to the board member because they just don't look about it. Because, you know, you don't have to, don't have to right to the other, other, that's that policy. Right. And they think that, you know, they think that, uh, Board members get paid. So, you know, yeah, that's how we know that. We get paid way too much money. <laughs> right, so I think that's why they jump over when you say, go to, well, I don't have the power to go that shit and do what you asked me to do. So I have to refer to you. No, that's that. That's the body corporate that you have power inside that. And, and one of the common comments could be, well, yeah. you guys run the school district, don't you? Right, right. <laughs> and, and you hate to say, no. <laughs> what do we elect you for? Right. To uh, hire somebody to run the district. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That Apple. should be what yeah. yeah. <clears throat> so, James, I think you raise a really important point. I mean, in the defense of the general public, right, they get mixed messages. So so let's let's look at that. I mean. You know clearly because of experience and as you learn about the roles and responsibilities applied to school districts. But it's not the same in city council. It's not the same in commissioner's report. The board knows it's not the same in the legislature, state or federal. Because they're looking going, well, you know, I mean, we each other. Right? My city council person has a staff member. They have a whole staff. They have an office. And they're paid now. And you know, I've been to those board meetings, you know, they last sometimes for days. Um, and, you know, anytime you go up there, you get to talk to them and they talk back and, and you know, and then I go to the school board and they won't talk back to the school board. Well, they just look there to like, you know, I'm pouring my heart out. Exactly. It's a bunch of kids. Yeah. And they just look at me like, yellow card, thank you, next. So, so I mean, truthfully, if that's their experience, it's no wonder they're confused because when you look at the law, education code, or any the government code, it's under the government code, it refers to all those bodies as governmental bodies. So, I mean, that's, that is the part of the wonder they're confused. Okay, number five, my favorite. Number five. He laughed at my question. <laughs> Accusation of racism related to a sports team. Never, only to put it on. An area TV station and ran the story and, and seven and ten and twelve and five, six and ten again. Uh, and came to the campus because the investigative reporter wants to, wants to know. Uh, where you pick up your child, and obviously they've taken you out, they know which car you drive. What would you do? What do you think? Leave. <laughs> yeah. Hey, walk out of your kid, just leave them in. <laughs> Meet me at the corner. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to be late today. I told her, I appreciated the fact that she didn't have run over the report. Okay. <laughs> See? Okay. See? See? Alright. Now, remember, they may have, you know, they, you know how nice they are. They stick the mic like in, in your face. You know, yeah. like kind of as your child's coming in. What does your board operating procedure say about talking to media? It says that the board president is the spokesperson. Ah. So if I'm a board member, what should I what should be my response then, Steve? I'm sorry. I have no comment call our board president. He's the spokesperson for the district. For the board. I'm not authorized to speak for the board. Keep it short. Well then the next question. Who is it? Who is the district? Or whatever the I mean whatever the protocol is. Oh, well, but don't you think that? Or off the record, Ed, tell me off the record what you really think. Hey, call me pretty quick because they can get our, our, 
our property is close to the property. Yeah, but I would give a text or something about it. From the superintendent, I'm going to say, hey, there's somebody there. That way, I would go. Absolutely. Stay away. Stay away. They shouldn't be talking to your students. This actually happened in my school district, and they were speaking to students. And luckily, a board member saw it, called me, and said, Ms. Magnolia, we've got a, a reporter here. And, and I was on that immediately and escorted the, the reporter off. I didn't have to SRR to the exact same thing that the first day across the street. Absolutely. Yeah, they do that. Five minutes. Yeah. Right. Rona does a good job keeping the board members aware of what's going on with the media. Yes. Uh, prior before anything happens, and I appreciate that information. He kicks out to us uh, uh, 30 minutes or an hour before whatever is going to occur or whatever is going to be seen on TV that we are ahead of it. And that's what's going to be done. Absolutely. It's a great position to where you have each other's back. So that's yours, man. Because there are things that you become aware of as people. So, yeah. And I don't think we ever caught you <coughs> by surprise. <laughs> it is, it would not get like that. We never caught off a car, I guess. You know. Yeah, we're very aware of what's going on with our industry. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Side, so you can 
kind of engage the water, do the same thing on anything else. And so, uh, you yes, know, yes, my district is elected to you. That's right. So, how do I support them? You know, that's, that's what I'm asking. Yes, sir. How, how do I support them? If it's not uh, <clears throat> the rest of the board. So, that's one of the toughest things about the board. It is. Because we all serve single member districts. Yes. But we are not representatives. This is not a representative form of government. We're trustees. And if every, if, if, the, if the majority of the community came to us and said, we want you to close the schools, yes. that wouldn't be the right thing for us as trustees if we're hoping the education of our students in trust. So we have to be careful, I think, about what the issue is and what people are asking you to do and how does that compare to your responsibilities as a trustee? <clears throat> As I mentioned to Dr. Fuller, before I was on the board, I didn't know, you know most of what I know now. And, uh, I mean, I think it is important on some issues that we do get community input, but on a lot of other issues, we must be educated them, and they don't really, you know, you know. What should be your focus in every decision? What should be your focus? That's why we have schools. That's why we have schools. It's for students. Not, not for the adults that teach them. <coughs> our our students. The students, education, and trust. That's right. And there are a lot of pieces of that. they got to have a building to have their school to, to be educated in. They've got to have people to educate them. So there's never a simple answer. You have to go back to the context about what the issue is. I like having our kids involved in some of our initiatives. There are other initiatives, I don't want them involved time, but they don't have the historical reference. They don't have life's experiences. And if you ask them how long should your school day be, they're all going to say 30 minutes. Yeah. You know? <laughs> and, and it just doesn't work. There are some things that we need them involved in, and there are other things that we need to tell them to get off the property. <laughs> Things that they think they know about as far as how the districts ran, the student education, and so on. And they're very um, verbal and vocal about it. And I want to relate them that their opinion does matter. We value yes. what the community thinks. However, um, that's not how we, um, how the board makes decisions. We make decisions, and I tell people based on the um, information that the superintendent and staff provides us that we don't know everything that they think we know. We are we're, we're educated from them. And then we together as a team along with all that. And if they think that, you know, we're supposed to just, you know, you see this happening, why don't you do something about it? You know, why don't you? Because it doesn't work like that. You know, we have to take all this data that they provide for us and all of their recommendations. So, you know, I try to share that. I don't know if I do it the right way, but. We try not to make decisions based on fear. We try to make decisions based on data. We don't try and make decisions on the truth. We try to make decisions based on the fact. The truth is, my cousin said he could save us fifty thousand dollars. The fact is, he can't. So you know, there's truth in his statement. Um, common sense. You know, we we try and, and use common sense in this boardroom as often as we can in everything that we do. We go back to the kids. Uh, somebody said a minute ago that the public doesn't know how schools work. I will tell you that some of the people who work in the school district have no idea how the school That's district true. works. That's true. Um, and, and so, you know, the, the, there's that constant uh, attempt at board 101 for even our employees. They don't work for us. They all work for this guy right here. So those are some of the things that, that we have to tell the employees of the district as well. It's almost like if they don't get the answer to Scotland that they want, well, I so wish I could go to 
to daddy or mama over here on the school board, you know, that's almost what people yeah. think that they can do. They don't get the system. They don't understand. Exactly so one of the things that we do really well here, you know, we talk about some of these public comments or talking to the public, is that Roland doesn't talk for the board and the board doesn't speak for the district. Those are two separate things. And there are things that belong to the district and there are things that belong to the board. We need to know what those things are and stay out of each other's backyard. That, that's the easiest way to get in there is to try and do somebody else's job. Absolutely. So I appreciate it. Yeah. 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 I was going to say, and large, um, we have a pillow that says we value community input, then we value community input. But at the same time, we are a board of several communities. Uh, so I'm in one community, you're in another community, or whatever. So one community cannot provide all the input of whatever you call a whole home. And so that's why it's valuable, as my uh, was saying, to get collect down or whatever. Now, it doesn't mean that I, I, I might have a little bit more understanding of what's going on in my community, maybe than someone else, but I can share that with the, with the rest of the board so that everyone can come, you know, so we can weigh things and then look at that. So, so the, the overall thing is, yes, we, we are concerned about what the community thinks of so we are listening and we value that. But at the same time, we don't make individual decisions about individual communities because we're not an individual we're uh, one large community corporate or seven right right and i think that's hard for people to understand i think sometimes that's even hard for us to understand <laughs> because you you feel accountable for your own individual but it's just like anything else you have a, that little small part that you're kind of maybe connected to is bigger is is a small part of a much bigger thing and that's how we have to think more than just my car, all the children, and I think that's a, that that helps me. That helps me to to have a bigger picture of something, and then maybe respond. You can still respond in a supporting way at the same time, but yet yeah, help them to understand. For example, I just had someone tell me the other day, I'm, and I'm just throwing this out there because we're talking about how to respond, and maybe y'all can help me with this. But they said, uh, "Oh yeah, you know all this pre-K." You know, pre-K for SA, and now the central stuff pre-K, they just want to <laughs> the, the district just wants to No. And I bet. Our response is, you got any spirit change? We love you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I didn't like quite what to say, but I fell back on our philosophy saying that we want the very best for all of our children and this is an opportunity for them to you know get a, an education early i mean you know what's what's the, what's worse I and mean, what's the worst thing they get a head start I mean, yeah. how wonderful is that you know so we well, have brainwashing as soon as we i know that i just i think we need a couple of thoughts so it's a moment to your point earlier in your response to the citizen who raised the concern see it, why don't you do something about it, that's not how it works, you know, we hear your input, certainly consider it, but we have a lot of information that we get from staff, and that is a good point, because my job along with my staff is to provide you, the board, with really good information, so you can take all of the information, as well as the perspective from your communities, and as a body, weigh, weigh that in making the right or the best decision. The other thing is, you're doing a really good job, and your response is, what we have learned to be called managing up. In other words, if somebody comes to you concerned, you go, oh my God, I don't know why they do that over the there. You say, you know, the staff over there is really high quality, they're working really hard, they never, they, you know, they never act like they're perfect, and they're willing to consider all things to make the experience better. I'm going to share that with the superintendent, they'll get right on it, doesn't hurt. You know, you're doing a good job of managing up. You're not stating anything incorrectly, you're, but you're not affirming the negativity or the criticism. Yeah. Because if you do it, you just validated it all. Yeah. Yeah. And so we're teaching our own staff to manage each other up. You still need to address the problem, but we set people up for success in working with that person yeah. or, or with the or, or that department or with that school. And that's your responses, which all of your responses 
if you tell them why you want those pre-K kids in, in school realistically, their eyes are going to roll up in their head because they don't want to hear all that yeah. stuff about exactly statistically that, that children in those, uh, in those circumstances do much better when they've had pre-K uh, than those who have. So they just don't want to do that. Right. I don't know.
we were studying the behavior of teachers. We studied that, studied that, but that was the thing that brought student success. And not too many years after that, 15 years or so, we started to study the principal as curriculum leader, administrators, and we have that thing out. But in the last seven or eight years, research nationwide has been focused on school boards. That school board behavior, what you focus on, is what will change the focus on student achievement. So I want you to look at this and tell me what do you think about this statement? What does it mean? Yeah. 
genuine information, then you're able to use it with this power. And so, I, I, with all the things that are coming up, and we get many opportunities to hear a lot of things from our superintendent that's going on, and, and, and get to hear and see things that are going to use what's going on in the schools. And then, of course, we can read in a paper about what's going on in education in general. But when we keep our mind, just try to keep our mind open so that we can help to shine that, then I, then I can see that if we don't, I, things will stay the same. I always thought that it was for a long time uh, that the, the adult of this thing is a parent. Parents need to change. Because if you don't support the child at all, by simple questions, what do you want to do, what do you want to do, they get them in homework. Instead of them watch TV, get the iPad, and play the games and stuff. Um, I had a opportunity to go to one of our PTA and I have time So I'm speaking to the parents and said, remember when the little one learned to tie the shoes, learned to move the buttons, learned to brush the teeth, learned to move the parents, what's the teacher? Well, why is it that we drop the ball once it's across the threshold? I said, now, can I do a little bit of I said, now, hey, I'm going to take some with me. We have an hour class. Very good. Now, you have five minutes to check in the Five minutes at the end of the class, you get inside. You have 50 instructional minutes, and you line them up. Start with A to Z or whatever. And you start teaching this thing. Each one of them. You're going to give people time. That's two minutes. How much can that child learn? In the meantime, when, uh, John and Mauer are pulling at each other. They quit, quit. And you're trying to keep control. So you have two minutes for each child. How much can that child learn in two minutes? Day. Five days. It's ten minutes. How much can that child learn in ten minutes of face to face? And if you don't enforce or supplement that at home, what do you do today, John? Tom and Betty Mary. Show me. You don't understand. Let that this one out. And if you don't, if you don't have to try to build on that to give that child to help and encourage them to study instead of letting them do what they want, then the outcome is going to be exactly what it is because I didn't care and I didn't care and I So until we change that, you know, my dad is a truck driver. Truck driver is fantastic. You, my dad was a pitch digger in construction, you know, that's some kind of But he told me if you don't like this work, you've got to study something. He's like, my hands are soft. And then, but he said, learn it. Doesn't do it. Doesn't come hard to learn it. But you can always face that. So if, until that attitude changes at home, the child is not going to that because nobody, nobody made it in the play. And listen to that statement that uh, students' outcomes don't change and don't be able to change it. Looking at that, I, I'm, I'm reflecting back on the uh, profile of the director. We had students coming in and participating in the workshop that we had. I learned more from that being a farm educator. If you did it my way, I don't think did it at all. I learned more from those kids on how to teach and how to work, get them involved in the teaching process. And I, I'm looking at that as uh, you have to what change your behavior to well, they can learn also because I learned a lot from those kids doing that workshop. Uh, my teacher just passed out of work and she said, sit there for 45 minutes and she cried. You know, that's not the way it wants to be taught. So I think uh, that's the way I'm going to say it. That's not the way I'm going to say it. Parents, parents, and board, I'm going to ask you to think about this. Which adults have to change first? You're serious about changing student outcomes in your parents? Okay. Another parent, okay. Which adults have to change? Teachers. Teachers. Right. Oh, no. You can't expect a teacher to do everything. You can, you know, manage, manage wise, you know, teach them, you know, what work was one, the alphabet, you have it starts at home. I think the answer to your question is yes. I'm not a proverbial chicken or the other. Okay. But 
somebody has to lead in that environment, okay? And so you hear James talk about uh, teachers changing, teachers changing the way they teach, providing more rigor in the classroom, challenging students. I think in most cases, kids want to be challenged. They don't want to just sit there and do nothing. We've seen that, we've heard that from the kids. And so, yeah, and so if somebody has to take the lead in and, and that typically has to happen in the classroom. And then maybe the kids will pull their parents along, but we, we don't have any control over the parents. Right. You know, exactly. and I, I wish we did. Yes. Maybe I don't wish we did. Uh, <laughs> you know, it's kind of like with the kids. You know, you'd like to find that cork that you can pull out and just pour the stuff pour it in there. It, it, it's not there. Some parents from um, a, a very low socioeconomic environment are going to demand more of their kids than people with all kinds of money. So when you tell me that kids in a low socioeconomic environment can't achieve, I know that's not true. Um, it, 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 a lot of it comes from the house. A lot of it comes from the house. I, I don't like the statement it takes a village to raise a child. Families should raise children. It might take a village to educate a child, but it doesn't take a village to raise a child. We can only do so much okay, in this environment. But it takes everybody. Public education is partnership between the public and the school district. And it's got to be, it's got to be viewed as a partnership. And sometimes we have to drag parents along. It, it, it's, it's a tough job. And sometimes the drag is a kind of problem. And sometimes we, we it's not a 50-50, sometimes it's a 90-10. And when you keep an open mind, when you say, you know what, maybe it starts with me. I can impact those five kids, 10, 15, 20 kids. As a principal, I can impact 10 teachers, 15 teachers, times 22 each, or a high school principal, or as a central office person, or a superintendent, as a board member, that's a huge responsibility. I don't hear, I've never seen all of your videos, but I would be shocked to find you going, well, you know what? We're not making any decisions tonight until the parents decide they're going to do their job. Yeah. The meetings will be short, yeah. but I don't think that works for you guys because you don't believe that. Touch, sorry, to touch on what Mr. Bright said. You know, my I came from a low social economic family and you know, my mother started washing dishes at the elementary school I went to, but no English. She has a high school diploma from Mexico. She was a manager of that cafeteria by the time we left. Twelve years later. But that never I have my master's degree, it took me a while. I mean I was on the seventeen year program, but I, I that never deterred me. I was like I you know, my parents wanted better for me and my brother. And then like I said, they would like me more than right. me. Right, that's why I'm the same way with my children. I'm like, you got to be better than me, you know? And so I absolutely agree. Awesome. We're thinking five-minute break, come back, and we're going to talk about this. Points around the thing in school. Eight characters. Five-minute stretch, three-minute stretch.
talk there and how they're all related and how they're all using the same systems to represent. And, and the last thing only, and I think it's the answer to the next one, is holding each other accountable for following those and the videos that they're live. They're not just some really from paper, they're living documents. Uh, I'll be 
obvious ways, but not but in some that's maybe not so obvious, but it's a, but there's a diversity throughout, and we represent a very diverse um, school district. I, I, I talk with my friends, a lot of friends that are educators in the school district, and I talk about how how it just works for us so well. The, the, the diversity, we celebrate that. Uh, we're able to listen to each other, and John and I were talking at the break about uh, how this, how how great it is just to be a part of this group and to be able to have discussions and stuff and that uh, it's just a, it's a wonderful opportunity. So I think I think all of that said, I think people see that when we come together. It's kind of hard to hide. I think that we love each other, <laughs> and, and I think that's how we're able to. And we hope that that's contagious. So those who are following the example, working together. And really, how we lead by uh, lead as United Team. I think we all do that, whether we're on an administrative council or whether it's the board. Because if you look around here and you see all these pictures of all the schools, they were all diverse and they united to become one school district. And I think they have continued to heritage this board to be united as a team. Awesome. Great. So we have aligned and sustained resources. Um, so we have a very extensive process by which we uh, create our goals and we end with an assessment. And so we get goals, develop our goals for the department, for the district, for departments and campuses that way. And then we continue our process by aligning uh, how we use our money and resources that sustain or you know to that are aligned with meeting our goals. Uh, and then so that's and we also have a very sense of purchasing you know requirement where we use duty housing we have a spreadsheet we have to make sure that the resources that we're purchasing the goals um, she wants to look at. So uh, then we also have our inventory control program in our processes where we need that helps us to sustain our resources. So everything that we do is very connected and cyclical um, and it starts with With your goals, your budget, with everything is very important. We also have cascading goals, so the more we give us a goal, the district creates goals to watch in this uh, cascading goals we did that process last year. So it's all very aligned. We align our spending and our resources to that.
and ensuring all of that is aligned in the same way. So to the idea that student outcomes are not going to change until it's a little later, change we do believe that now more than ever we've got really aligned systems to make sure that all the adults in the organization, from the board down through the student desk level, are aligned to achieve the same outcomes. Right. So all right, down to our resource application. That slide, but Ed and I had the last one, and we, did, we don't even have to, to say much about it because that's what we're here tonight to do is, is training. And uh, I hope that it's online. But we only had 39 slides, we got through six. So uh, I'm thinking we'll have to come back if you want us to, to do the other 33. Uh, it was a privilege to be with you tonight. Uh, we have some things in your packet that we didn't get to, so I think Ed's going to talk to you a little sales pitch about some region 20 things. We're not selling them, just to let We're you know. We're not selling your parades. <laughs> um, there is a pamphlet in there that has the duties of the superintendent and the equipment that has the duties of the board. Um, and in the middle section is the collaboration between the two. Um, this is to get a copy. The only thing they tell you is after every legislative year, a couple of the references may change because things move within code, but nothing has changed in terms of responsibility. So again, just something for you to have as a reference and guide. And then lastly, the back of your packet, um, board member, you have an evaluation form. And if you would be so kind, uh, we hold ourselves accountable and our boss holds us accountable, and this is one of the things uh, that we take back. So if you would mind filling that out, um, if it went well, we are in region 20. If it didn't well, go well, if they go to region 21. We'll say, uh, <laughs> region 21. Never So we'll give a couple minutes to fill that out. And we do appreciate um, having time with you this evening. So thank you. Please do.
going to have to we're going to have to make a policy on this. Policies are voted on. We don't have an action agenda tonight. So what I would like to have from everybody is their thoughts on how you feel that we should move forward. Uh, please send those to Mr. Toscano. We all have this document that has FAQs and just to read through it. They need to basically see the things summarizing. But from that document, they can send those thoughts my way. And then we'll compile those. And when we do have this as an action item, we'll have that discussion and we'll be able to decide how we want to move forward with that. So if there's some serious consideration that this could have an uh, immediate and profound impact on our meeting, uh, good. Uh, so think about whether we want to restrict people to just agenda, whether we want people to talk about anything. Is there a specific time limit that you want to allocate to each person? Remember, we can't say 30 minutes, there's 20 of you that want to talk, you each got X amount of time. We also can no longer say if there's 25 of you speaking on the same topic, you have to elect a spokesperson. You can't do that anymore. Either. Right. So think about how that will impact our meeting, uh, how you might like to see that uh, couch. I mean, we'll get all that stuff to roll in, we can kind of compile it, and then we'll come back and, and bring a cohesive uh, uh, policy together. We don't have a lot of, awful lot of comments, and I think that until we can get something put in place, we'll be able to sort of wing it at the meetings based on who we have to sign up. We'll continue with, with our current policy right now, which is people can come talk on it uh, and, and just move forward with that. See how, we'll, see how that works. If, if we have some problems in a couple of meetings before we can get this put in place, then we may have to call another work session and uh, count it out and, uh, and get it all nailed down. But until then, I'd like to use a common sense approach to this and continue to be able to hear from the community, but also be able to continue to do our business. We think currently they're allowed to speak about anything that's not on the agenda. That's our so, current right. policy. They can speak to it. One of the options with this new complete law is that we could restrict them to only comments about what's on the agenda. Now, in a work session or a training session, that that would make comments not very, not very, uh, not a lot of comments because okay, we're going to have school board responsibility training. That's the only thing you can talk about. You can't come and talk to us about <coughs> food in the cafeteria or the transportation department or something like that. So when you're, when you're talking about those things, uh, keep those things in mind. Right. Uh, so that's all that there is on our day 113, is that correct? So uh, 113 is actually the entire update. Oh, that's what was it before the uh, uh, at the lack of regular meeting. So uh, you guys have had that meeting. And this is just the four months of that one. Um, I'm sure I'm going to take a motion on the consent agenda. Mm -hmm. uh, a motion to accept the consent agenda is presented on this very interest. We have a second by Mr. Massey. We have the consent agenda is approved to be a unanimous consent. Any other announcements? Second. Um, Region 20, training, tomorrow we go. Yes, yes. So we will have you. Is a local government offer conference disclosure statement. You guys have signed these before, and every time we all sign them, we're like, huh? What is this for? And we got some clarification today. We all, and, 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 and I attached the policy so you can see what specifically it's referred to. But in essence, it's there's a couple of criteria that you have to meet, right? And one is uh, if you have a, uh, a, a, a a relationship with a vendor that is paying you $2,500 or more in a year, that would be a conflict disclosure. Or um, the other would be if you have a family relationship with a vendor, then you have to make a disclosure. But if, there any, but if there's no disclosure, then this doesn't need to be fully posted. We, we traditionally done is just have us all sign it and we say NA because we generally don't have any. And then we posted it when we were going through our website and we had some of these that were from last year, so we thought we'd be updated. When I started to update mine, it just doesn't make sense for me. So we 
called on the TASB lead for the clarification. Because first we called the Ethics Commission, they said, oh, uh, we just sent a form out. <laughs> so then we called TASB legal for interpretation. They said, basically, we have seven days from the time that any of us have a disclosure. Uh, and it also refers to the other thing you have to disclose is if there's a vendor that provides a gift in the amount of $100 value or more. And it describes in the policy or the, the document here as well as the policy what that means. And so one thing that's not is if you have dinner as a guest with the vendor, like when we go to Tassi Tassi, that doesn't count. Uh, but there's other specific things. So, uh, there's other very specific things. So, uh, if you were to be given a gift and you accepted it and met these criteria, then you have to disclose that and you have seven days by law to do that. So from time to time, we may, it may feel like we're interested two or three times a year. Uh, in part, it's to make sure that we're just keeping it top of our mind, uh, but also know that that would happen before you did it. You probably want to, probably want to talk about it and make sure it's a good decision the second day you do it. But you need to disclose it. That doesn't mean personal. Basically, read through it. If you've got no disclosures, you don't need to do anything with it. We're going to delete these posts to these previous ones from the website because we don't have that one posted if there's no disclosure. But that's what this is about. No disclosures. No disclosures. You don't need to do anything with it. If there was ever something that you met those, those disclosure requirements, you have seven days by law. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So who signed up for tomorrow?